Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Nomads video. And tonight we're going to be talking about a very popular subject. Actually, it's kind of a frightening subject. We're going to be talking about heart, heart disease, the Nomads aspect. I would encourage you to go and look at some of the video clips of the uh, practice members that we've had given their testimonies, how their blood pressure has gone down and they've been able to get off of medication. They've lost weight. And I know that Nancy did a phenomenal one with heart palpitations. So we appreciate you being uh, with us tonight. Debbie and I are going to be talking just about information that will help make a difference in your lives. And anytime you want to um, just make a couple comments, Deb, just go right ahead, okay? All right. Okay, so what I want you to do is this is uh, just a very simple diagram on how your spinal column is like a set of circuits. And so your heart is really a pump, but it's a pump that's impacted by electricity. I thought I'd throw a few different visuals in tonight. This happens to be a phosphorus lamp. And I just wanted you to see how the, just touching this, how electricity impacts the heart. So the heart is a bundle of muscle that pushes blood through the body. Now, as a chiropractor, you might say, why are you so interested in heart? Well, I've been practicing since 1978, and I want you to know I can count on my hand the number of patients that have been in our practice that have died of what we call an acute heart attack. And what we are learning and what I'm seeing is over time is that your brain sends messages down the spinal cord to the organs and tissues. I have to show you this this other diagram right here, and this is so significant. So you can see that the heart is right here, but if you trace the nerves to the heart, it comes to the upper part of your spine. And when someone comes into our practice, we make sure that we focus on that area in the spine that it's impacted properly. Now, I can literally talk to you three or four hours alone just on the heart. And what happened was in the late 1980s, I was having a lot of practice members come in that were having chronic neck and upper back challenges that I discovered over time going back to my embryology classes in 1974 that their upper back pain was being caused by sugar. When I started really looking close at their films, I noticed that there was misalignment to the vertebra in the upper back area that went to their heart region. And so with the innovation of video fluoroscopy, and that was a definite help by Dr. Anthony and Dr. Kaysen and utilizing some other tools, we've been able to help, Deb, individuals create strategies for optimal heart health. And that has been a real pleasure. Well, you know, Dr. Bob, a lot of this, I believe, um, is related to the adjustments in the office to helping your heart function properly. But... You, you just pointed out something about sugar. So obviously food impacts what's happening with your heart. So tell me, what foods relate good and what foods relate bad to your heart health? Well, if you follow uh, myself or Dr. Anthony or Dr. Kaysen at all on any social media, or if you've read any of the books that I've been really fortunate enough to write, sugar by far, Deb, is a leading issue because see, sugar causes inflammation in the body. And a lot of individuals have thought that it is caused by increased cholesterol. And I'm not saying cholesterol is not the issue. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna have a greater chance to have heart challenges eating a donut on a regular basis than you are gonna have eating red meat. So here's just another prop, it's fire. Fire is inflammation. Sugar causes inflammation in the body. I want you to jot this term down. It's called glycation. Glycation is inflammation. Glycation is caused when sugar and protein come together. That's why one of the leading causes of inflammation in the body is yogurt. Mm -hmm. And yogurt is a combination of, of protein and sugar because yogurt has more sugar in it than ice cream does. And I just had an opportunity to speak at a local health food store the other day, and someone asked me, because you, you have the ability that you can um, type us in some questions here, 
that someone asked me if Greek yogurt was okay. I don't have anything against Greek yogurt. The real issue is, so this is some basic physiology. Sugar and protein, when they come together, cause inflammation. So you can do a search on this after we're done tonight. Inflammation in the body is called glycation. It could cause advanced wrinkling and deterioration of the skin, but it also, Deb, can impact blood vessels. Now, I'm going to give you, we could talk a lot about food, but I have something else I want to just bring up and say this is Prop City. <laughs> this is a loaf of bread. I have nothing against bread. The real issue that we're seeing is gluten. Gluten itself plugs the little villi in your intestines so your body cannot absorb minerals. So we have a tool called an acoustic cardiogram, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I have had individuals who are anemic and have had heart challenges because they have bread, rather it be rye, wheat, oat, or barley. So I'm not saying I never eat bread, but I don't have bread every day. And we have a tremendous almond butter uh, bread recipe that you could go to another website, which is Drugless Doctors, and that's drs.com, and look around, and there's an almond butter bread recipe that I know that will help individuals. Um, so, Dr. Bob, when you're talking, really all these foods can have a certain effect on the body. Is there any foods that we should eat for good heart health? Well, I can tell you probably some of the more important foods that you want to focus on would be walnuts. Walnuts are a source of good fat, uh, obviously olive oil. And I'm going to tell you, avocado is a tremendous food. Avocado is like eating olive oil in the raw, natural state. So uh, avocados are the omega-9 fats. And I know that Debbie and I, we eat a lot of vegetables. We saute our vegetables. I also eat raw vegetables. But Debbie, probably it's going to be, and I, I had to talk about this tonight. We have all these little props for all of you. It's the ever famous Dr. Bob's ABCs. I would like all of you to eat at least a half a red apple every day. You can lower your cholesterol 13%. And if you go and do a search, Ohio State just recently released information that you can lower your cholesterol up to 40% by including an apple in your diet. This happens to be a artificial plum, but for the purpose of this lecture tonight at workshop, this happens to be a beet. I'd like you to consume at least a third cup of beet fiber. And I'm going to say, why fiber? Because I don't want you to be doing beet juice. I have nothing against beet juice, but beet fiber will lower your cholesterol 40%. And then finally, we have carrots. A medium carrot every day, along with the third cup of beet fiber and the half a red apple, has the potential to lower your cholesterol over 40 percent. That's a lot, Deb. <laughs> that is a lot. You know what, Dr. Bob? Not only food, but I believe that in our office and really for ourselves personally, we also take supplementation. And we do that for like an enhancement to what we're already doing. It's not a prevention. It's a, uh, it's a part of a program that we do together for all of our health. And tonight, we have a special bundle that we call our heart bundle, that it is going to go to some one of our viewers tonight. But what you need to do is type in where it would be your questions, type in here to be eligible. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about that later. Do you want to talk about the bundle for a second? Well, we have a couple items that we um, utilize in our practice. We have a product called Biocardizyme Forte, and it's an excellent a quote unquote multiple vitamin for the heart. It's going to assist in optimal heart function. And we also encourage our, our practice members to use optimal EFAs. Your body needs oil. And I'm going to show you a, a prop here in a moment that is quite important. Optimal EFAs help take away inflammation in the body. And also, B vitamins are important. We utilize the Biotics product line. Biotics has a lot of really wonderful products, but the B vitamins, Deb, are really important for the muscle contraction in the heart. 
So remember, please type in here and you're eligible for the giveaway, which is a heart bundle. Dr. Bob, what else would you like to talk about? Well, one of the tools that we use in our practice is something called an acoustic cardiogram. And this is an example of an acoustic cardiogram. It's basically an electronic stethoscope. The heart goes lub-dub. And the lub-dub noise is from the valves closing. But what goes on, and this is an example right here, we put the electronic stethoscope on the person's heart. You can see that this is the normal right here. It's a real tightness. But if you look down here, this is, happens to be an actual acoustic cardiogram from someone. The space is wide. It's wide depth because that individual did not have enough B vitamins. Mm. What takes B vitamins out of the body is sugar and stress. So here's probably a little bit of a, a better diagram of what the acoustic cardium looks like. We have this tightness there. So you can see lub, quiet, dub, quiet, lub. And so that's significant to us because when we have that heart functioning that way, we know that the heart is functioning optimally. But I mentioned earlier about gluten. This is the example of what gluten will do to the heart graph. We have the lub, but you have what we call a lot of chatter. So literally, your heart, the muscle closing that heart valve is quivering. Now, I know that there are people out there that have a history of atrial fibrillation, which is abnormal heart rhythm. So recently, in the, um, the journal of womensjournal.com, and this is in the, the February-March issue, there was a healthcare provider, uh, a medical doctor, and um, somebody asked him a question, what causes atrial fibrillation? So I'm quoting, in some patients, there's no apparent cause for AFib. Now that's really important because if you watch television in America for more than a half an hour, by golly, by the time you're watching television, you have constipation, sinus problems, you need drugs for your toenail fungus, you're constipated, and you're depressed, and that's not counting, you have atrial fibrillation. So the American television network market because of media and advertising have everybody frightened that they're going to pass. Mm -hmm. So in some individuals, there's no apparent cause for AFib. These individuals have what is called lone, that's quote unquote lone, or idiopathic atrial fibrillation. So we don't profess to have all the answers in our practice, but I just showed you a tool, which is the acoustic cardiogram. So when an individual Debbie comes into our practice, we will do, especially if they have a specific health concern, we have the technology, the innovative technology. This is not a diagnostic tool. This is a tool for a nutritional assessment to see how the function is doing inside of a person's heart. So there are other body signals along with that. Sometimes, Deb, could you ask me some of the possible symptoms of people, individual that with heart issues, is in a quarter of a million, the very first symptom for a lot of people, Deb, is death. Hmm. So this is no joking matter. You want your heart to be assessed. We use an acoustic cardiogram, but a part of the whole program that we see in our practice is the fact you want your spine to be functioning also, Deb. So Dr. Bob, let me ask you a question about the ACG, and then I have something to say after that. But the ACG specifically is a tool, a tool to tell you what the practice member needs. Is that correct? Well, the acoustic cardiogram is where we're listening to heart sounds, and the pattern of the heart sounds tells us what is going on inside of the person's body, and then we make recommendations. So let's just say, Deb, that we saw this individual and we saw a lot of chatter. We looked at their diet sheet, and we noticed that they had toast for breakfast, quesadilla for lunch, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I would strongly encourage them maybe to, for a month or so, back off of the gluten, I'm going to tell you that most people say it's the best thing they ever did because the inflammation goes away out of their body. So you know what's really uh, what we're doing tonight is we're going to have a giveaway for an ACG session and that is for our practice members who are on the line with us here tonight in our Google event. and. Um, what we need you to do is type in ACG in one of those boxes. And uh, we will talk to you about that a little bit later too. 
Okay, so there's something else I really need to show you. This is some of the most advanced technology right here that I'm showing you. This is an essential fatty acid blood spot test. Everybody, because you're on the line tonight, really want to be put this into your assessment modality. This is something that you want. So what I'd like you to see here, that there are different heart fats, so are different fats. So this is ALA, alpha linolenic acid, but this one right here next to my finger is EPA. This is for heart health. So in the comfort of your own home, we can literally send this kit anywhere in the world. You can take the blood out of one of your fingers with a little spring-loaded lancet, put it on a bladder, we send it to a lab in Georgia, and that lab is going to give us the result of what oils your body needs. And I'm going to tell you, this is probably one of my uh, most unique new props that we've been using when I go out and speak. This is a dipstick. Now, some of you that are 25 years old or younger may not know, but a dipstick is a way that you can check the oil level in your car. So for those of you that are a little bit more mature and have been checking your oil for your entire life, the dipstick tells us the volume of oil inside of your engine. Not only does the essential fatty acid blood spot tell us, tell us the volume of uh, fat that's in your body as far as levels, it'll tell us what oils you need. We can literally, and I can comfortably tell you this, forecast the direction your body is going hopefully in enough time for you to make appropriate and necessary lifestyle changes so you don't have a heart attack. But this is not just heart attacks. Though. We're talking dementia. We're talking Alzheimer's. We're talking pain syndromes. So let me ask you one question. If someone had a heart attack already and they lived, what would be some of the first things that they would want to change? Well, I would have to tell you that most people probably could lose anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. Most men, you do not want a waistline greater than 40 inches. If your waistline is greater than 40 inches, that visceral fat is creating distress to your heart. If you're a female and your waist is over 35 inches, the same. Now Deb, we don't smoke, and the people that are in our life don't smoke, um, but smoking is not good. People who smoke cigarettes have a greater potential to have health issues. So if you have a history of heart challenges, I would obviously stop smoking cigarettes. And Deb, finally, it's sugar. Sugar is something that causes inflammation in the body. What about blood pressure? Does blood pressure have anything to do with a heart attack? Well, it's funny that you brought that up because I have, this is a, um, blood pressure. yeah, no, I was gonna say, I'm trying to say very, very nicely. <laughs> We don't really use this in our practice anymore, but it's a great visual. This is a, an old-time uh, blood pressure unit. Uh, uh, we use an electronic unit today, but blood pressure, Deb, yes, is really important. And let me just give you the one-minute version of blood pressure. So your heart's a pump. So the blood comes back into the upper part of your heart on the right side. That's why you want to always sleep on the right side of your body, the way that the blood flows back so you won't have a heart attack during the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So the blood goes from what we call your atrium to the right ventricle, it goes to your lungs, back to the heart, and it goes out your left ventricle. Now listen to this. If you're overweight and that heart has to push that blood really hard and it goes through your whole body, for every pound that you're overweight, and every pound being fat, mm -hmm. you add 200 miles of extra blood vessels to your body. Mm -hmm. So your heart has to push harder into all that fat tissue and that can cause a stroke if that pressure gets too high. On the other hand, as that blood comes rushing back into your heart, if it comes back rushing too hard, that lower number or the diastolic number, if it's 90, so let's say normal is 120 over 80. So let's just say that your systolic or the higher number is 180, you have a greater chance to maybe stroke out. But if the blood is coming back to the heart really fast, and that 80 number is now a 90 or 100, you have greater chance, Debbie, to have um, congestive heart failure. Mm. failure. But let me share something that we're learning in our practice right now. And it's actually quite frightening. 
we're seeing a number, especially of ladies, but it's also men, mm -hmm. that are coming in with heart palpitations, high blood pressure, anxiety, and sometimes leg cramps and constipation. Those are body signals, Deb, of a magnesium need. Mm. So magnesium is what's in typically in most laxatives. A great source of magnesium is anything green, kale, collard greens, Swiss chard. Debbie and I eat green food every day of our life. Mm -hmm. So if you're having issues with constipation and you're not eating green food, add green food to your life. If you're eating it already and you're still not having a regular bowel movement and your blood pressure is up, you really want to contact us because we happen to use a product called Magnesium Oritate, which I'm going to tell you right now, we have three magnesium products that we use in our office. We use Magnesium Oritate and or a liquid magnesium called Aquas Magnesium Chloride. And I'm going to tell you right now, it hugely will make a difference. And another product that we use is called MGzyme because the MGzyme puts not only magnesium in your body, but it's going to help you with a bowel movement. You want to drink water. Water is really important. Now, somebody had typed me in a question, and they wanted to know if meditation can help blood pressure. And here's my answer to you. Stress can cause someone's blood pressure to go up. So if you happen to be someone that has a tremendous amount of stress in their life, and meditation helps you to calm and relax your body naturally without taking any other kind of medications, that, it, to me, is really okay. Um, I also know that exercise will help lower your blood pressure. I know making sure that you drink enough water will help lower your blood pressure. You say water will lower your blood pressure. Yes, over time, water will really lower your blood pressure. I also know in our chiropractic practice, they've done research. It was reported in CBS News years ago that you can lower your blood pressure up to 17 points by getting a properly administrated, um, administered subluxation correcting adjustment to your body hmm. so you know we if you would like to you could send us in a question i know we have a few minutes left i know we need to make sure that everybody says here if they were going to want to uh receive the potential of receiving the um heart bundle heart bundle so you would be eligible for that prize if you put in here and where the question is at type here if you are a current practice member and you put acg in another line then you would have the potential to get a complimentary ACG in our office. And lastly, because it's almost the end, um, anyone that types in trans fat in the subject line will also be getting a free PDF. And all of those, we will um, take this down, customer care at drugglessdoctor, that's spelled out, drugglessdoctor.com, they, we need your information. That if you're one of the winners, and we'll be announcing that shortly, then please email all of your pertinent information to customer care at Drugless. And I think the book that they're going to be receiving today is the Trans, Trans Fat book, yes. which is Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide, which is my segue into trans fat. Now, normal fat, healthy fat, is C-shaped. We call that cis. So flax oil is cis or C-shaped. And what's so significant is in the human body, these C's come together and they form cell membranes. Well, back in the 1800s, there was a French gentleman who was trying to develop a new way to make candles. So he heated vegetable oil and the C-shape became T-shaped. This is very significant, by the way. That's trans fatty acids. So I like to start looking at ingredients on, on boxes that you're purchasing. And if you, it says partially hydrogenated oils, it really is trans fat. So when I wrote Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide almost 10 years ago, you may imagine it's been, it's actually been 10 years right now, people were really confused. So they changed the law in America, and the law said if a product has a half a gram, now listen, this is so silly, a half a gram of trans fat or less per serving, they could legally put on the front of the package zero grams trans fat. But in 1998, they've discovered 
that if an individual was consuming a gram of trans fat or more on a regular basis, they increase their potential of having heart disease by 20%. Hmm. So you can say, well, what are you saying, Dr. Bob? What I'm saying to you is really almost any type of trans fat or partial hydrogen oils that you put in your body, it causes the inflammation I was talking to you about earlier. So 35 or 40 years ago, they were telling everybody to use margarine. Well, margarine actually caused heart disease. So if you have a healthcare provider yet that's still telling you to use margarine and egg beaters, I think it's time to shop around for a new healthcare provider, Deb. In that particular book, Dr. Bob, I think one of the most interesting chapters and articles is about cholesterol. And I think people also feel that cholesterol is a, uh, one, detriment to their health, but also a part of the heart disease. So can you give them a short divvy on cholesterol? Okay. So cholesterol is not good or bad. Cholesterol is necessary. Think of cholesterol as a fireman. So what do firemen do? Obviously, they put out fires. Well, in the human body, cholesterol cannot float in blood. It needs to be carried on a truck. For the purpose of this conversation, there are two trucks in the body. The LDL truck that takes the cholesterol to the fire and the HDL truck that takes the cholesterol of the fireman back to the firehouse. What is so significant is if you have inflammation in your body, the cholesterol will go and put the fire out, but that means you're not, you need a lot of LDL fire trucks. So if you go to a healthcare provider and you're not feeling well, and he does your blood or they do your blood test, and your LDL is out of here, they'll want to put you on a statin drug. Well, that's wrong. Because see, that statin drug is taking cholesterol out of your body. It's being used to help put inflammation away. So what you really want to do is sit down, look at your diet. It's not about red meat. Mm -hmm. It's about how much sugar are you consuming, how much trans fat are you consuming. Those really have a lot to do with high cholesterol. But so does mm -hmm. stress. That's why meditation could be helpful for those who have high blood pressure. And so does a low thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. Subpar thyroid gland will elevate your cholesterol levels. So... Wow. So the one thing I do want to just make sure people really understand, inflammation is what plays a huge role in not only heart disease or heart challenges, but all kinds of other health challenges. Well, I want you to know that inflammation can create, Debbie, almost all the health problems that people live with today. And I know that sometimes I sound like a broken record. You just don't want sugar. And if you crave sugar, there is a, a, a nutrient that we use called chromium. It's C-Rzyme. And you may even consider having a mineral tissue analysis of your hair to check out your exact um, chromium levels. And the winner of the ACG session happens to be Richard Steele. And Richard, you're going to want to contact customer care at, at drugglessdoctor.com. That's customer care at drugglessdoctor.com and we'll help you schedule that complimentary acoustic cardiogram, and I'm looking forward to help making a difference in your life. And remember, for your free PDF of Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide, please put trans fat in the line there where you would be asking questions, and you will be receiving one shortly. Also, make sure customer care at Drugless doctor.com. You will need to contact them for any questions that you might have about our show tonight. So let me kind of wrap up a few thoughts here. If you're starting to notice that you're having heart palpitations in your chest, you make and you're not having regular bowel movements, consider some green food. Make sure you're drinking water. Regular exercise is very, very important. If you are not a chiropractic patient, try to find someone locally that's skilled and can help assess to determine exactly what's going on. And if you're really bewildered, we have people that come to visit us from all over the United States. It's very easy. Do a Google search, and you could participate with us. Now, next month, I know we're going to be talking about sleep is going to be one of our primary topics. I know that we're going to be discussing a few other items, including some kidney involvement and some MS. So our goal, our passion is to make a difference in each and every one of your lives. Um, you're going to want to share this information. We'll have it posted for you um, in a very short time period. You can do a Google search. We have other information about heart. Our goal is to help make a difference. 
We appreciate you and um, look forward to being with you in the future. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night.